can't be fearless because that's when you get hurt. You got to be um, you got to be smart and um, and realize that you can potentially get really hurt and and obviously you just point out that figure out the dangers and spots you don't want to be and put yourself in and try and keep yourself as safe as you can. But basically you're you're on that edge of you know you you're in a very dangerous spot. Yeah, as you get older, I feel like you figure that out a little more. Surfing big waves from a young age, like I was, you know, 14, 15 and paddling out when it was pretty heavy and... never sort of say no to paddling out, it was just in me to paddle out even if I sat on the shoulder and watched what the older guys were doing and well I guess when you're young like that you're not really thinking too much, I guess you you know you, you want to prove a point to everybody and, and it was what I wanted to chase becoming a professional surfer so yeah I guess I wasn't thinking too much at all, <laughs> it's like pretty much just put your head down and go kind of thing. And, stuff on the news and whatever at those days is so exciting to watch and be a part of it's the biggest attraction like when when someone when highlights come out of big waves it's almost more viewed than than a competition or something you know it's kind of the pinnacle of surfing partner she um she knows what I you know she's she's been with me since since I was 20 so she knows what it's like so I'm sure um I'm scared of once or twice oh, Lori. but you know that's part of it so I was at a prime age, I was 26, and I was performing. I had covers of magazines that year and um, won Big Wave Awards for Australasia and Biggest Tube. And um, it's all I knew from day one was my income was surfing, and then bang. The surf industry apocalypse happened in the late 90s, heading into the noughties, um, an unprecedented boom, really. Um, you know, one stage there, I think, the, collectively the industry was probably worth, you know, 10 billion. And to the point where it was almost ridiculous what some of the surf companies were doing. If you, if you went to Times Square in New York City, you had MTV with Carson Daly up on the top floor and right beneath it, like the Billabong store. And straight across the road was the Quicksilver store. And so they felt like the dream would never end. But it did end spectacularly lily it ended so spectacularly it basically just blew up and uh and sure enough you know towards the end of the noughties that's exactly what happened contracts got pulled back in and lorries was one of them yeah there's a lot of good surfers that got cut at the same time just heavy death defying waves who doesn't want to watch that uh, and no one did it with more grace and ability than Laurie, so it was pretty mind-blowing to watch him kind of <laughs> back working as a tiler. He has an unpaid professional surfer when he's one of the best talents on the planet. You know, people blew up about it. You know, they're going, well, how's this happening? You know, like, this guy's amazing. You know, how can you drop a guy like that? And it seemed like the only person who wasn't pissed off about it was Laurie, <laughs> you know? You know, I'd never tell people this, but like, it was a really hard transition for me at the start. You know, I had this massive low where you lose your sponsorship or whatever. You gotta find a job and I got no experience with nothing. At the same time, we were having our first baby, um, our first daughter, Isla, and um, yeah, life was pretty, uh, it was a pretty stressful moment that sort of year, but like everything I find, I, I, I stay positive and I found my feet and. You know, I've got good friends around and a beautiful partner and kids. A lot of cases, there wasn't a lot of loyalty from the brands 
towards them. Now they're fairly expendable. A lot of these guys are, you gotta remember, have been doing that since they were kids and grow up with a mindset where they go, well, you know, this is a career, you know, I'm gonna chase this hard. So I really didn't know anything else and probably didn't have a lot of formal kind of training in anything else to fall back on. It's lucky I have a lot of tradesmen around me that um, basically were offering me, you wanna to come to this, you wanna to come to this or whatever. And um, so, yeah, the change was was a, obviously a huge change because you, you're getting paid a lot less money to go work 10 times as hard. I think the positive is that it's made me realise to appreciate um, every hour of the day. It's made me realise that life's short and precious, you know, and um, when I was surfing and getting paid to surf, there's a lot of times you're just, you're cruising and not doing much at all, which sounds like the lifestyle and, and is amazing, but it's, I'm, I'm a really active, busy person, so in a way it's kind of, it's, it's cool being busy and, um, and working for your money, and, um, and now I feel like I appreciate surfing way more. A lot of the guys who are doing it aren't doing it for huge contract dollars and if they didn't have the contract dollars they'd still be doing it anyway and there's a lot of guys that do. Do those people deserve to be well paid and well rewarded for like those crazy acts of bravado? Yeah they, they should be. Australia can produce a lot more big wave surfers and it gives kids the opportunity to um, to chase their dream and something they love doing like every other sport out there, you know, and other countries who, you know, are pushing for big wave surfers in their country. And, um, Australia will just fall behind if they don't sort of step up a little bit, you know, it's, it's kind of like this. Like I said, there's a lot of good Australian big wave surfers and not many of them are getting paid. Um, not even that, you know, it's... It's just cool to watch what people can do in the ocean, and um, especially in big, scary waves. It's it's the biggest attraction. or whatever it is you're doing that you're making money like you know because it could potentially end and now I've seen what you've got to think about after surfing that um, you know I, I, I want to keep that too.